Hey guys, we're back with another Fusion 360 update. Let's check it out. Hey everyone, Aaron here. In this update, I get the pleasure of bringing you a couple modeling updates and some simulation improvements. Starting with the modeling environment, let's add some bolt holes to the slew bearing. So let's jump into the hole tool, which you'll notice has been completely overhauled. You'll still be able to make those complex counter bores and counter sinks, but defining them has been improved with enhanced visuals. Further to that, you'll now be able to define thread conditions within the same tool, seeing as they usually go hand in hand. In this case, it'll be fully threaded, modeled, and we can even verify which objects to add this hole to. When I'm happy with the definition, we'll go ahead and okay it, and a quick circular pattern later, and it's done. On the other side of this assembly, we're gonna try to replace what's made with plates and tons of welds with a sheet metal design. I have a part started, but half of the bends are missing. In the past, you could mirror those over, but it would require major workarounds. Now you can use the mirror command to mirror the flange and its features. When you do, you'll wanna pay attention to the order in which you select those entities, and going along with the timeline makes that simple. With that mirror feature added, it looks like we're much closer to that replacement. On the side flanges, I have some cuts across the bends, which presents a special case and something worth noting. You'll see that in order to mirror that to the other side, I'll need to do it in two separate mirror commands. First to mirror the flange, and then the cuts. You'll also want to make sure that the compute option is set to optimized. For those of you using the patch workspace, you'll be thrilled to hear that the patch command is no longer a one-size-fits-all approach. Now you can set individual continuity types and weights per edge selection, giving you incredible control of what you're making and how. Switching gears to simulation, I have a couple quick updates to report. You should know by now the amazing power that comes with the simulation simplification process. It's a load off to be able to explore different design iterations unfettered by the constraints found in the modeling environment and to get those simulations run faster. So when you go to remove components, usually the first and most common step, this process will happen more than five times faster. You can see as I focus on these two parts for this shape optimization, it takes something like two seconds. Now check the inset image. Out of curiosity, I did the same process on the same assembly, but with the old code. And seeing this in real time, you really start to understand how much better it is now. Considering how successful this simplification workspace has been, users of Autodesk CFD and Moldflow 2019 will now be able to take advantage of these tools. And when the models are ready to go back, look no further than the buttons provided on the toolbar. Jumping ahead, the shape optimization is complete but now I want to use that mesh to make changes to the design and re-verify the results. In the past, I would have had to promote that mesh back to the modeling environment, which puts my results out of date, just to start this process. Not the case anymore. When you go to promote the mesh, you can do it to the modeling environment, to an existing sim setup, or to a clone setup. From there, I'll sketch the cuts from the shape optimization flow path, make the cuts in the simplification workspace, and even reuse the study setup for a linear static test. So much better. Looks like this change was a little aggressive, but after a quick change, we can retest. Speaking about aggressive, this arm was subject to a different study, an event simulation, to understand the effects of impacts as this megabot rains blows upon its opponent. But as incredible as that looks, a very common way to parse time-based data is to use 2D plots. The unfortunate thing about these plots in the past was that it was only available for the global data but now you can gain further understanding about what's happening around particular areas because the plots can be viewed for probe points. If probes don't exist, make one on the fly, and you can even compare those results side by side. We'll add the plot to the report, and before I pass, I'll make one more announcement. We're happy to report that our nonlinear static stress solver will be graduating from preview technology and is now ready for the big show. Thanks to all of you that tested this while in preview. We couldn't have done it without your feedback. Thanks, Aaron. I'm pretty excited about threads coming to the whole command. We have a great list of CAM updates to share, starting with a shiny new kernel and even faster post-processing engine. In the tool library, I can right-click on the ribbon to hide or show different columns, so I only see the tool data that's most important to me. I can also move the columns by clicking and dragging. We also added support for custom turning inserts and holders for both general and boring turning tools. For inserts, select Custom from the Shape dropdown and enter the rest of the parameters like usual. 
for holders, select custom from the holder style dropdown, and define the leading and trailing angles individually. There are also some exciting developments for turning profile operations. For those of you with prime turning tools, we now support prime turning through a combination of three parameters. First, in the tool tab, set the direction back to front. Then in the Passes tab, under Roughing Passes, enable Use Back Cutting. Here you can set the entry radius and exit distance, and you're ready to do some prime turning. Even if you don't have prime turning tools, you'll be happy to know we have added support for pecking on Roughing Passes. The peck depth specifies the amount of material to remove, and the retract is the amount the tool moves back to disengage with the cut. Pecking will help break those long chips that can wrap around your part or get caught in the part's catcher. Let's take a look at a stock simulation that shows both the prime turning and pecking at work. Next, a quick but powerful update for probing. Probing now supports tool orientation. In the Geometry tab, check the Tool Orientation checkbox to override the Setup Orientation so you can probe features all around the part. Moving on to milling, the first set of updates is all around drilling. First, holes can be selected by diameter range. So if I want to spot drill every hole up to 3 8 I can set that diameter range and every hole within that range will be automatically selected. Next, I can use a containment boundary to only select holes within that boundary, just like a machining boundary in a milling operation. If I want to use sketch points or circles to locate the holes, select same diameter now works for sketch entities. If I choose a sketch point, it will select all the sketch points in that sketch. If I choose a circle, it will select all the circles of the same diameter in that sketch. There is also a reverse order checkbox, which does exactly what it sounds like. This might save some time between drilling and tapping operations if the holes start on opposite ends of the part. And last but not least, there's a hole counter in the bottom corner, so you can easily see how many holes will be drilled. Next up, we're going to take a quick detour to the model workspace. I know a lot of us in manufacturing have been waiting for this one for a while, so the Fusion team is happy to announce that sketch text now includes single line fonts. They're all at the top of the fonts list, and the other parameters work just like normal sketch text. Do note that the best operation to engrave these fonts is a trace operation with a small negative axial offset, since engrave requires closed contours. Last but certainly not least, we've made an improvement to adaptive clearing so it can make both conventional and climb engagements. In the Passes tab, enable both ways, and the tool will engage with the material in both directions. Optimal load and feed rate can be defined for each direction to give you the best result. Al Watma and the HSM product management team go into greater detail in the video linked above where they ran some preliminary tests showing that results seemed best when the conventional optimal load is set to 85% of the climb optimal load. Let's take a quick look at these stock simulations, where red indicates a climb cut and blue indicates a conventional cut, so we can see the difference between a both ways adaptive and a traditional adaptive clearing operation. Whoa, Marty, those enhancements look freaking awesome. I know I'll be testing out the both ways adaptive clearing, but now let's switch over to some of the enhancements to drawings. First, let's create a parts list for this shoulder assembly. In this update, this drawing will automatically balloon the assembly. Look, they even aligned. This is going to save a ton of time ballooning and aligning a drawing. Now let's go to the second sheet of this multi-sheet drawing. I want to create a non-aligned section view. Previously, there was no way to track a long geometry when drawing section views unless they were along the ortho paths. But now, we can lock onto geometry and accurately draw this section view. Next, let's add a center mark to this drawing view. Previously, we didn't have much control over the center lines and center marks. Now we can grab the extents of the leader lines to manipulate the length to our heart's desire. But it gets better. Hit shift and now the entire center mark will expand equally. Now let's enable our dimension tool. 
This next enhancement is going to be awesome for those of you who are in love with object stacks, back from those AutoCAD days. Here, we want to measure the minimum distance between these two mounting holes. Simply right-click and you will get a list of different snapping points to measure between. Here's a pro tip. If you want to use another snapping point, simply right-click again before your second anchor point is selected. Now, let's use this tool one more time to add the measurement to the center of this attachment bracket. This time, we'll use the midpoint object snap. Our final drawing enhancements enables you to insert images onto your drawings. Whether it's an image of your customer's logo or the rendering of the design, insert it into your drawing to help the shop floor get a better visual on what they're about to make. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm looking forward to taking advantage of those drilling enhancements. And of course, we can't cover everything in this video, so make sure to check out Kaching's blog for more details. And for those of you new to Fusion 360, there's a ton of great learning content in the description. And that's all, folks. Until next time.